And the next item of business is members' business debate on motion 8659 in the name of Jackie Bailey on the Gurukh Kilcreggan ferry service. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would ask those who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Jackie Bailey to open the debate around seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I welcome the opportunity to discuss the future of the Gorak Kilcreggan Ferry Service. Let me thank the MSPs who backed my motion, and I'm pleased to have secured support of every party represented in the West of Scotland. At the outset, I want to pay tribute to the passengers who use the ferry and have campaigned over many years for an improved service. They have been stoic in the face of constant adversity. But frankly, Presiding Officer, enough is enough. Some of them have travelled to the Parliament today to watch the debate from the public gallery. Others are watching from home. And I am relieved that they even managed to get here on time, given the constant disruption to their ferry service. Kilcreggan has always relied on the River Clyde for its transport links, dating back to the Victorian era when wealthy Glasgow merchants built grand summer houses along the shoreline of the Roseneath Peninsula. Back then, the Clyde steamers took them directly to Glasgow's Broomilaw. Today, local residents can't even depend on a reliable service to Gorok. It's fair to say that this year has probably seen the most severe disruption on record. Now, the Kilcreggan Ferry is operated by Clydelink, and the contract was renewed by Strathclyde Pas Partnership for Transport earlier this year. But I have to tell you, the Kilcreggan Ferry is now the nautical equivalent of faulty towers, but even Clydelink make Basel Faulty look competent. Barely a fortnight goes by without another problem resulting in crossings being cancelled or the service being suspended completely for days at a time. In June, the service was suspended for seven days after the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency inspectors found serious defects on board the Island Princess. There were problems with life jackets, a fire pump, fire extinguishers, a crew member with no evidence of basic safety training. Then comes July. The service was again suspended for 10 days due to more failed MCA inspections. In August, there were staff shortages because they had holidays. No planning for a replacement, so the service gets suspended again. Later in the month, it was off again because of paperwork being incomplete and unsatisfactory. Let me take you to September. The service was suspended twice, for a whole week on the first occasion and then a day on the second. The same pattern repeated throughout October and November. What began as a summer of chaos for ferry passengers has extended into the autumn and winter. Do you know, the ferry is off more than it's on in every single month since the contract was renewed. And to top it all, last Friday, a fight broke out between one member of the crew and the skipper. Both have been arrested. Now, you just couldn't make this stuff up. And every time the ferry is off, passengers need to make a 52-mile journey by replacement bus service instead of the usual 13-minute ferry crossing because there is no backup vessel. Presiding officer, this is a lifeline service, particularly for the communities on my side of the river. I know passengers use the ferry to get to work, to get to college or university, to access health services, which are based predominantly in hospitals on the south of the Clyde. The impact of the disruption on their daily lives cannot be underestimated. And I've spoken to constituents who have missed job opportunities because they couldn't get to that interview. Others who have been disciplined because of their timekeeping through no fault of their own. And others who have given up on the ferry completely and moved out of the area. The local businesses on the peninsula have lost out on revenue from tourists, cyclists and day trippers on the days the service was cancelled. If reliability does not improve, then visitors might not return next season either. And let me just tell you, a little fact we gleaned from FOI. Clyde Link, the ferry operator, owe over £30,000 in unpaid peer fees to Argyle and Butte Council. Frankly, that's a disgrace. But such is their frustration, such is the frustration of my local community, 
that the Peninsula Choir has become the most likely contenders for Christmas number one with the new song they've recorded, criticizing the slow and bureaucratic response from officialdom. Hundreds of people have signed my petition calling on SPT and the Scottish Government to take the service out of the hands of Clyde Link immediately. Now, I've lost count of the number of times I've had very productive meetings with the Minister um, for Transport to discuss this issue. So I was delighted when, before the Scottish Parliament elections, the Scottish Government agreed in principle to transfer the service. Last October, Hamza Youssef confirmed that Transport Scotland and SPT had reached an agreement in principle. That's great news. However, the transfer has been held back by the delays to the Scottish Government's review of EU state aid rules on ferry procurement. Transport Scotland has confirmed that SPT has now provided all the information it needs. So the only thing we are waiting for is the conclusion of the review. But I ask the minister, why do we need to wait? Because in June, the Scottish Government assumed direct responsibility for the ferry service between Oban and the small island of Carrera. The route was immediately incorporated into the CalMac contract and the community will get a newly built vessel thanks to the government's intervention. The review wasn't an issue there. It doesn't need to be an issue here either. If there's a will, then Transport Minister, there is a way you can do this. SPT has issued a new tender notice for the service from next June and I welcome that because the poor service is frankly appalling. And I welcome the action taken by Councillor Martin Bartos and the senior management team at SPT. But you know, this cannot go on. We must have a reliable operator and we must have one now. Because the impact on my constituents and indeed those from across the river is huge. And we've been really patient, but my community is not patient anymore. We put up with this for seven months. We're not prepared to put up with it any longer. Can I say to the transport minister, para handy would be better than this shambles. So I urge the Scottish Government and SPT, get beyond the reassurances. We've had all of those. Please take action and please do it now. Uh, can I say to those in the public gallery, it's not appropriate to show appreciation or otherwise. Thank you. <laughs> and we move on to the open debate speeches of four minutes, please. And I call on Stuart McMillan to be followed by Jamie Green. Thank you very much, President Officer, and I'd like to congratulate Jackie Bailey in securing uh, this uh, important uh, members' debate this afternoon. Unfortunately, this issue of this uh, Gurukh Kilcraigan ferry service has been a continued massive inconvenience uh, for the users in my constituency and also in the, at the north of the river. Now, Jackie Bailey set out many of the problems that the service has, has been beset with, so I'm, I'm not going to go over most of that ground, but suffice to say that it's clear that SPT have failed from the outset with this service and their complete incompetence in managing the service is there for all to see. Now, I haven't always been an advocate for Transport Scotland taking the service on, but over the last 12 months, my opinion has certainly changed. Now, prior to the current service providers operating the run, the service seemed to operate with little fuss. Obviously, the retendering had to take place and the current providers won the tender with uh, an apparent £1 million saving to the public purse. Now, the financial saving, however, will no doubt have been nullified by others as the service has lurched from one cancellation to another, and this, the effects this has had upon local businesses, both north and south of the river. Locally, only two individual constituents have actually raised this issue with me, although it has been raised regularly by the Greenock West Cardo Bay Community Council. And like uh, Jackie Bailey, I've written regularly uh, to SPT, Transport Scotland, and also to the previous and current uh, transport ministers to try to get progress with this saga. Now, presenting officer, over time, I have came to this one simple conclusion, that SPT should not be in charge of the Gourick Kilcraigan ferry service. They have mismanaged the service, they have let users down, and they have proven once and for all that they care little for the Clyde coast. I have raised the issue many times, and in my recent uh, correspondence with SPT dated the, the 11th of August, my opening sentence was that the Gourick Kilcraigan ferry route uh, contract was renewed in April of this year, and frankly, the performance has been nothing short of appalling. And the reply, uh, which came in uh, within a week, stated, 
and that the contract specification to which Clydelink are operating does not require a backup vessel or for them to supply a replacement bus service. Now, that certainly seems to contrast with the comments in the press release issued by SBT in January 2012, uh, when the contract was awarded, when they stated, uh, using a new build 60-seat vessel, Clydelink will provide a Monday to Saturday service between Gourock and Kilcreggan. Now, the vessel that's used is the MB Island Princess, which is not a new build for the route. So, is there a potential then that the press release issued by SPT isn't accurate, or have they just been sleeping on the job? Now, irrespective of the chicanery coming from SPT on this issue, and going back to when they signed the contract, uh, the situation hasn't improved, and it's left a, a sour taste in, in the mouths of many people on both sides of the Clyde. Now, I've got a meeting with the Transport Minister on the 12th of December, and I'm looking forward to uh, having discussions about this uh, directly, and also hopefully try to find a way forward. But these issues with this route are not new. They've not just been for the last year. Uh, they have they've kept persisting over the years due to the many faults. But it's clear that SPT is not the correct organisation to be in charge of the service that affects both sides of the Clyde. Now, when the contract was initially awarded way back in 2012, it was a, it was a different run group of individuals who ran SPT. Now, I certainly hope that the new group of councillors on SPT can now force through a change of mindset in that organisation to get them to take responsibility for the problems of their own making. Now, presenting also the people who use the Gourick or Craig and Ferry Service deserve a working and reliable ferry service. And if that means Transport Scotland become the agency to deliver this, then so be it. But it really is in stark contrast to the delivering services at local level agenda, which so many of us in this chamber actually support. And I'm sure that if and when Transport Scotland do take responsibility for the route, then this government, then this, uh, uh, government will, be, will be accused of centralisation. Now, I think it's irrespective as to whoever controls the route that my constituents and the constituents north of the river actually deserve a service that is going to work when they say it's going to work and also to, to abide by the contract that's been signed. Thank you very much. I call Jamie Green to be followed by Neil Bibby. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm very pleased to participate in this debate, uh, having raised this issue in this chamber a few weeks ago with the First Minister. I think it's uh, very telling that no one's really making any political points today that uh, the support for Jackie Bailey's motion comes from across the chamber. And I'm very pleased to uh, see the local member, uh, Fern McLeod, uh, Mr McMillan, also participate in this debate. Um, I mean, this is really about people, the service. Um, it, it simply cannot be allowed to continue uh, as it is. The, the status quo uh, is completely untenable and unacceptable to people on both sides of the Clyde. Passenger numbers in the service have really been plummeting. In 2009, 2010, around 71,000 people used the service regularly, uh, and that's dropped to around 53,000 uh, last year. And it's no great surprise, uh, given the unreliability of the service, passenger numbers have fell, fallen around 30%, and possibly as a result of its unreliability. And despite this fall in passenger numbers, the service actually remains quite a similar size to many other routes, some of which are operated by CalMac, which carry a comparable number of passengers annually uh, and more reliably. So one must ask why this service has been allowed to descend into such disarray. But instead of looking backwards, I would like to uh, look forwards as well as to what we could do about the situation. The current contract with Clydelink costs the taxpayer around 300 £20,000 per year. Uh, this is actually an increase compared to the previous contract on the service, an increase of around £80,000. On top of this, uh, there is uh, the matter of the subsidy, uh, which uh, Clyde Link also received, which uh, increased by around 55% in the new contract. Um, the ferry claims to be, uh, a, 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 and I quote, uh, a frequent reliable ferry service from Gourock to Kilcreggan. Well, anyone who lives in Gourock or Craigan knows that this statement simply is not true. On several occasions, there have been a number of staffing issues, and this has led to limiting the number of passengers uh, that are able to use the service for safety reasons. Uh, the reason for that is that staffing uh, uh, shortages means that often less qualified shipmates captain the service, and this limits the number of passengers to just 12, when at peak times the service should actually be carrying around 50 people. Uh, which is the vessel's uh, current maximum capacity. Um, so to have just a quarter of the amount of people on board is simply unacceptable. Technical faults have also caused the majority of delays and cancellations, 
And in fact, high winds have only disrupted the ferry two times since June, to my knowledge. And this will only get worse, however, as winter kicks in and the weather picks up. Now, the motion uh, that Jackie Bailey's presented to us uh, notes that disruptions have become particularly acute since June. So to put it into context, uh, there have been over 50 days of disruption since June of this year. But this matter does not start in June. This has very much been a long-standing issue for quite a long time, uh, affecting people on both sides of the Clyde. The problem is, uh, presiding officer, is when the service is cancelled, the only alternative is to go by road, and that's over a 100-mile journey. Uh, and that's simply unacceptable to the many different types of users who use the service, people commuting to Greenock to attend college, uh, people who are travelling daily to work. I've heard stories from constituents who have got the ferry to work only to discover they couldn't get the ferry home uh, and then had to get the bus home or either, either uh, called for someone to come round the Clyde and actually pick them up. It takes hours and it's the last thing you want at the end of a, a long day at work. It's also affecting tourism and it's also affecting people's ability to get to Inverclyde Royal Hospital as well. So the ramifications of this are, are quite, quite large. Um, as I said, looking forward though, um, you know, I, I was particularly um, unsure as to what the best solution is, as to whether SBT should uh, renew the contract, uh, whether they should uh, continue to maintain the contract. I think there's a general feeling in the Chamber today that perhaps uh, Transport Scotland should be looking to take this contract on board. In my meeting the, with the Transport Minister on this issue, he did promise to look at the issue uh, and review uh, the cost of the service and the ramifications of taking it into his department. I do wonder if he might update us on any progress he's made with those thoughts. But either way, whether it's SPT, uh, whether it's the existing operator or new operator, or whether it comes under the uh, guise of, of Transport Scotland, people just want a reliable service that works on time when they want it to, uh, and I think uh, that's the outcome that everyone in this chamber wants. Thank you. Call Neil Bibby to be followed by Maurice Crory. Thank you, President Officer. I thank Jackie Bailey for securing this debate today and for ensuring that the concerns and indeed frustrations of those who rely on the Gurukh to Kilcreggan service are put on the record here in the Scottish Parliament. Jackie Bailey quite rightly spoke about the importance of the ferry to the community in Kilcreggan and the surrounding areas. The short crossing to Guruk it makes hospitals, shops and public services accessible for those who would struggle to reach the same destinations timelessly and economically if travelling by land. To many people, the ferry is a lifeline service which makes living on the Rosneaf Peninsula viable. Without that service, fragile communities would be even more exposed to depopulation and the risk of exclusion and isolation. Disruption to the service brings disruption to people's lives in those communities too. But of course, it's not just passengers based on the Kilcreggan side of the crossing who depend on the ferry, but people departing from the Gurukh side too, in particular the workforce at the naval base on the Clyde. For them, the alternative, as we've heard, to a 13-minute journey by ferry is a 90-minute journey by land, a massive increase in their total commuting time. Yet, with frequent cancellations, staffing issues, mechanical faults, safety defects and fundamental questions about the ability of the current operator to deliver a safe, consistent and reliable service, that hour and a half journey is one that computers, commuters are having to take more and more. This is unacceptable. This is a service that Clydelink is contracted to provide. It is not optional. It is a contractual requirement. The extension to the contract agreed by SBT earlier this year was reportedly worth £320,000. That's £320,000 of taxpayers' money. Clydelink have been unable to demonstrate that they are capable of honouring that contract and meeting the agreed terms of service. The contract should be cancelled and a new operator should be found. The chair of SBT, Martin Bartos, as Jackie Bailey mentioned, has confirmed that in his opinion the situation travellers presently find themselves in, uh, dependent on such an unreliable service, is unacceptable. He also advised that SPT have arranged for checks of both the Island Princess vessels and the crew, and he specifically said that any deficiencies will be reported. But action is needed on the contract itself. I note the announcement from SPT that they will be tendering early after what was reported in the Greenock Telegraph as increasing frustration with Clyde Link. Moves to replace Clyde Link with a more dependable operators are welcome. However, as others have said, 
largely for historic reasons, the Kilcreggan Ferry is in an anomalous position, uh, still being provided by SPT. Surely now is the time for the Scottish Government to make good on its promise to assume responsibility for the service. Surely now it is time for SPT and the Scottish Government to transfer responsibility for the Kilcreggan route to Transport Scotland. No more delays, no more prevarication, let's just get it done. That's what passengers want, including hundreds of passengers who signed Jackie Bailey's petition on the subject, some of them who have joined us here today. That's what the communities want, including Cardwell Bay and Greenock West Community Council in my own region, who have specifically called on the Scottish Government to, and I quote, resolve this once and for all. I can see no reason why the Scottish Government should be dragging their heels. The misery for passengers has gone on for too long. Enough is enough. It's time for the Scottish Government to intervene, and I would urge the Scottish Government to intervene. Thank you. The last of the open debate contributions is from Maurice Corey. <clears throat> Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I'd like to start by thanking Jackie Bailey for bringing this debate, and it's an important debate for our community uh, to the Chamber today. I also welcome the residents from uh, the peninsula and other, and Nimbaclyde as well. It's great to see you here, and it just shows the Minister what support we have in trying to sort this problem out. The Kilcreggan Ferry has been a long established link between the north and south side of the Clyde, um, which has now dropped sadly to around 50,000 passengers a year from the 80,000 when it was running really well. The primary reason for this drop in, in travellers is due to the unreliability of the service, forcing commuters to find alternative and much longer and costlier routes to work, as other speakers have said already. Many of the members in the chamber today will experience delays on trains, buses and other modes of public transport. Therefore, they'll be able to appreciate the frustration, the inconvenience this causes, even on the odd occasion. But when it becomes a regular and constant occurrence, it becomes unacceptable and a daily nu nuisance which costs people unnecessary time, money and stress. Last year there was also problems and it was suggested that uh, Transport Scotland should assume responsibility for this service. At the time I made it clear that the offering of a short term contract would only continue the problems experienced with this service as a 16 month contract offered was not long enough to attract new investment. I would stress again that this service needs a long term well funded contract to ensure the service is managed efficiently. Uh, there will appear to be a unanimous agreement in the transfer of the contract from SPT to Transport Scotland, although it must be kept as a single service and not bundled into another contract taking the focus away from this important service between Kilcreggan and Gourock. <laughs> Colleagues across party lines on both sides of the Clyde have been campaigning for the end of this contract and the issue of a new one. I understand that by cancelling the contract, it leaves no service, which would be even worse than the current situation. However, SBT could issue a new tender with a transfer clause if Transport Scotland were ready to agree to take this service over. My team and I have been proactively working on this issue to find a solution and have highlighted local businesses that are willing to, and keen to put together a tender. I would urge SBT to issue a tender to get this process underway to resolve this issue as quickly as possible for the benefit of commuters that have to travel over an hour instead of a 10 minute journey. In particular, yes, I'll give, it, give way. Jackie Bailey. Would you welcome the fact that the tender actually is out, um, the tender date is about to close and hopefully we will have a new operator. Yes. Maurice Corey. I yes, I, I welcome that and I'm glad to see that that has actually happened. Thank you. Um, I also, just, uh, the importance of this journey refers, I refer particularly uh, to the workforce that are at Coolport and Faz Lane, which is a very important employer, and we know at peak times that ferry is terribly important to get people from Inverclyde across and back at later on in the evening, in the day. Due to this large increase in travelling time and inconvenience, it deters day trippers from, from visiting the Roseneath Neath Peninsula, and particularly and heavily impacting on local businesses. Kilcreggan Village is formed of several very good local businesses, which are suffering massively as a result. And an example of this, an individual who travels from Gurick to Kilcreggan to visit the award-winning butchers on behalf of several families, and while the order is being prepared, enjoys a few pints in the local pub. Groups of cyclists, walkers, etc., are also unable to make the trip or choose other destinations due to the risk of not being able to return home. And only last week there was a song released to raise awareness, as Jackie referred to, uh, and my colleagues in the gallery have, uh, have worked studiously at uh, the awareness is issue performed by the local Peninsula Choir on Kirkland Pier. And I'm delighted to see some of them here today in the gallery, as I referred to. 
This project was coordinated by my team as a community project to highlight these issues and to bring to the attention of the Scottish Government the frustration being caused, not just within Kilcovin and Cove, but also in Gourock and Greenock and in Verclyde. This has created attention as far as away as Australia and California, where a choir where I wished the group good luck in sorting out our service and applauded the local community for raising issues in such a creative and unique way. And well done to the, the choir in doing so. I hope that the minister has seen the video of the song and has noted the support for this service and its importance to the local community. And in conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, with these points in mind, I would once again appeal to the minister to bring this service under the control of Transport Scotland to ensure ensure it's reliable and safe and efficient operation in the future. And as the final line of this song says, we need our wee ferry and we need it now. Thank you. I call on Hamza Yousaf to respond to this debate. Around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, Presiding Officer. I wish to thank, of course, Jackie Bailey for bringing this motion uh, for debate to the Parliament and for the really excellent contributions uh, across the Chamber. Uh, very, a number of common threads which I'll try to uh, comment upon and of course I'll try to answer some of the questions that have been asked by members and, and of course they can intervene uh, if they think uh, I'm omitting uh, anything. So I'll try to get right into the, the nub of the issue. We are very acutely aware and I am of the recent periods of significant disruption uh, as described particularly by Jackie Bailey to the Gurukh Kilcraigan ferry service. I understand the frustrations uh, of passengers that rely on this important link indeed is my, my, in my role as Minister for Transport and the islands I hear from service users from right across Scotland whenever a any ferry service is disrupted, whether that be due to weather-related reasons or technical issues or other unforeseen circumstances. I have, uh, of course, in relation to this specific service, um, met with Jackie Bailey, uh, will soon be meeting uh, with uh, Stuart McMillan and members have met with members of the Cochrane Community Council on this issue. Uh, I've exchanged a number of letters with them and I'm aware that officials uh, have recently met with community council members on both sides of the crossing and heard first how, firsthand how the dis disruption has affected them. I would like to welcome uh, members uh, or ferry service users uh, to the gallery. In fact, the user of the ferry service would be, of course, quite entitled to, to make a song and dance about this disruption to the service. I have viewed the performance of uh, our Kilcraigan ferry. I'd like to congratulate all those involved. It was a very novel way, uh, of course, of, of, of making their point, but born out of their very real anger uh, their very real frustration um, and as Jackie Bailey will know disruption affects workers traveling to and from Fasley and Coolport I think as our colleague Neil Bibby uh, has said commuters traveling to Gurukh uh, as Istra McMillan has said uh, for their onward connections uh, some of them onward connections onto, onto Glasgow locals using the service and then also businesses on both sides uh, of the crossing uh, as well so it's quite clear that we're all in agreement here that the current service offering is simply not acceptable for anyone. But it's also clear, which has been said by every member here correctly, that SPT do hold the responsibility for the service. And I've met with the Chair, Councillor Martin Bartos, and had a, a number of discussions with him, whether on over the phone or face-to-face, -face, where I've expressed my concern. On the issue that many members have asked me to address on the transfer of responsibility, now let me say that the Ferries Plan 2013 to 2022 stated that the Scottish Government is willing to be responsible for all lifeline ferry services in Scotland, subject to the principles set out in the plan, and that we would work with local, local authorities and regional transport partnerships to discuss the possibility of the Scottish Government taking over the responsibility for the ferry service. Now, where are the, uh, where, where the issues that still need to be discussed, which I absolutely appreciate from Jackie Bailey and Stuart McMillan's constituents' point of view, may seem like bureaucracy, is the issue of the true cost of the ferry service. Now, Jackie Bailey rightly highlighted that the vessel being used has over 30 defects noted by the regulator, the MCA. Some of those defects were serious defects. Now, for the Scottish Government and Transport Scotland to take on that service, we'd have to know the true cost, which would include, of course, perhaps replacing the vessel I give away to Jackie Bailey. Jackie Bailey. I am grateful to the Minister for taking an intervention. Would he confirm, though, that SPT have provided Transport Scotland with all the information they have requested in order for you to make that decision? Hamza, you uh, recently, I've received some more information uh, from SPT, and I promised Councillor Martin Bartos uh, that I will take <coughs> a very close examination and a look at that. And I do want to talk about a way forward, but I just wanted to make the point here that 
um, th there are some very legitimate concerns and questions that we have about the true cost, which we need to have the, the, the answers to. The other point that's been mentioned uh, that, I, that I think is absolutely right uh, is that, uh, of course, uh, recently been advised the SPT of their plans to retender the service, which has gone out. I think the tender closes on the 4th of December there uh, or thereabouts. Uh, and, uh, of course, it will be uh, what, what is really important about that tender that SPT have put more of an emphasis on quality over price, which I think will be very, very welcome. So we'll, what I will do is wait for that tendering process to close, re-engage re my conversations with Councillor Martin Bartos, see what his feelings are about the tenders, the, the expressions of interest that have come forward, uh, and with the information recently provided, as Jackie Bailey mentions, have a further conversation and a continued conversation uh, about uh, the transfer of the responsibility. But every single member here has been absolutely right in saying that the service provided by the operator is simply not acceptable. And the offer is there to SPT that if they wish to explore whether or not the operator has lived up to their legal obligations, I'm more than happy to provide for them uh, use and resource and the expertise of Transport Scotland and indeed our other uh, experts that we have in this field to examine and work with SPT uh, to see if that uh, can, can be explored in further detail. Because I agree with Jackie Bailey to wait for the retendering of a service that wouldn't possibly come into service until summer next year. You can't have months and months and months and months of continued disruption. So if that is a helpful offer, which I'll make to, to SPT, then I'll certainly do that. But I want to wait until the tender closes to re-engage uh, conversations uh, with the, the head of SPT and I give Jamie to... Green. I, I do thank the Minister for taking my intervention. Can I just clarify, uh, based on the comments he's just made and the limited time we have in this debate, is he saying that he, is his understanding this is not a lifeline service and could not be classified as one? And secondly, is he also saying, possibly indirectly, that if it's identified that the cost is more than the current 300 odd thousand, if he deems it to be too much, then Transport Scotland simply would not take on board the liability of the service. I'm a bit confused as to what the plan of action is at moving forward. Hamza no, no, Yousaf. I wasn't uh, disagreeing over the nature of, of, of the service at all, and there's a very clear definition of, of, of lifeline services uh, and our ferry plans. That not, that's not the issue of uh, any bone of contention. Uh, what I'm saying simply is, I think very reasonably, I would hope, that in order for us, if we were to take responsibility, we would need to know the true cost of that. We have a budget in a couple of weeks' time, we would need to know the exact cost of that, which would not just be the contract cost per annum, because clearly there's an issue around the vessel. And I'm saying that we need to drill down into whether or not, uh, what the cost of, of replacing that vessel would be. It would require a backup vessel, perhaps. So what is the true value of taking over uh, the entirety of the contract, as, as, as was done in previous examples, as Jackie Bailey uh, mentioned. So we need to have that, and SPT have provided some further information. I promise to, to have a look at that. And if it's helpful, now that the, the tender is approaching close, once it, is, uh, once it has closed, uh, I will have a further conversation with Martin Bartos and every single member who's spoken here, I will endeavour to give an update because uh, we have still, in principle, as Jackie Bailey mentioned, uh, an agreement there to take over lifeline services, so I don't shy away from that, but we, it is based uh, on the criteria as set out uh, in the ferries plan. So uh, there are, I think, it's important for us to see what the, the feedback is from the tendering exercise, and I would welcome members' thoughts on that, and I will certainly give my thoughts to that to SPT. I can give a guarantee to members that on the closure of that retendering process, I will re-engage with the chair of SPT, who I must remind the chamber has responsibility for this ferry service. And it's my hope that with the steps SPT have taken, with the continuation of the conversation, that will provide uh, users with a much more improved service offering and one that they can hopefully rely on. That concludes the debate and the meeting is suspended until half past two.